This is lesson 1.6. We're going to be talking about how to use the find function, not the search function, the find function, in order to make your search more effective and just all, overall, all around better. So here's the case. Suppose you end up on a very long web page. And you know you do this from time to time. You end up on a very long page, and you need to find the thing you're looking for on that page. For instance, suppose you run in a local 8K race. I ran in one recently, and I want to find my time on that page. Here's what the page looks like. It's just a long, long list of people and their running times, and it goes on forever. So how do I find my time? Because looking through this line by line is going to be very slow, and it's going to be fraught with error. It's going to be the kind of thing you mess up. So how can I do a better job of this? Let me show you. In all modern browsers, there's what's called a find function. That allows you to find a piece of text on the document you're looking at. In all browsers, you can do either Command F, you're off on a Macintosh, or a Control F if you're on a PC or a PC equivalent. In both cases, you do this kind of funny two-finger strike. You hold down the Command key and then type F, or hold down the Control key and then type F at the same time. In both cases, that will bring up a search box that allows you to search through that text, finding the text you're looking for. So here's an example. Here's that long text document I was talking about earlier, the results from the 8K race. Here we are. This is the race page. What I'm going to do is type Command F, because I'm on a Macintosh, running Chrome. Command F, and you see this thing that pops up here? That was the previous search, so I'm going to go back. This is the page we want to search for. This is that page of all the results. So what I'm going to do, since I'm on a Macintosh, is type Command F. Watch this. Command F, and the box appears in the upper right corner. So now I'm going to type in my name. R-U-S-S-E-L-L. -L. And notice it's not case sensitive here. And if you look carefully, you'll see that there, this is one of four. So let's go down and find the highlighted text. And there it is, Russell. Notice that the case is not the same, but that's all right. This is case insensitive. Now that's not me. I'm Dan. That's my son, as it turns out. So what I'm going to do is click on this down arrow or hit Enter. It does the same thing. It goes to the next found text. In this case, I'm going to hit Enter, Return, and it finds my name. As you can see, Daniel Russell, and this is my entry here. And that's my time. So notice, though, that it says up here that there are four hits on this text, Russell, in this document. So I can use these arrows to go down to the next one, which is now an age bracket group for my son, or a different age bracket group for me. And so now we see all the different instances of the term that we're looking for. It's worth knowing that this same trick, this Control F, Command F, find function, is different on different browsers. So for example, in Firefox, the, the find box will appear in the lower left corner, way down here. Now you see, just like in Chrome, you've got the up to go to the previous instance and down to go to the next instance on the page. Basically, you move up, move down to each of that instances of the text you're looking for. You can also click on this Highlight All button to automatically highlight all of the instances on the page. So that's Firefox, lower left corner. If you're using Safari, the Find box appears in the upper right. You can see this here. Again, they can go forward or back. That's what the left and right arrows are. It tells you how many matches you, you have. And if you're in Chrome, the same kind of thing. Here, we've got some results. We can go up and down. It tells you the total number of instances found. In Internet Explorer 9, it's in the upper left. So yeah, I know we've got one in the lower left, upper left, upper right. Pay attention to your browser. You need to know what your browser does in this case. But in Internet Explorer 9, it appears in the upper left corner. Again, they have previous and next to go forward and back in the document total number of matches, and different options, including the option to match the case. So as I showed you in Chrome, I had case insensitive. Here you could turn case sensitivity on if you wanted to. Here I'm on the Wikipedia page for the Summer Olympic Athletics events. And what I'm curious about is to find, how did Usain Bolt do? So what I'm going to do is type Command F, and you see the, the thing popped up there, and I'm going to type 
the name Usain because that's an unusual name. And you can see here, we already know we have eight instances of the word Usain on this page. And if you look in the right hand side, you see the little yellow bars there and the scroll bar. You can see all eight positions in the long document where this word occurs. So you can see over here, the browser has highlighted his name. And if we skip down a little bit, I'm going to scroll up. Now you see the, the scroll bar up here, and I'm going to move it down to the next group of instances. And there we go. We have three instances of Usain Bolt's name, one, two, three, corresponding to these three yellow lines in the scroll bar. This is nice because you can now see how those terms appear throughout the entire document. That's sometimes a really handy thing to know. So why do you need to know this? A couple reasons. First off, knowing how to find your search term on the page really speeds up your search. In our studies, we found that it speeds up this, this, we found that it speeds up the rate at which people search by roughly 12%, and that's a huge amount of time. It's like giving you 12% of your life back. It also puts you in the top 10%, because in our studies, we've also found that about 90% of everybody who uses Google does not know this trick. So now that you know this trick, you're in the top 10%. You'll be faster, and we also know from other studies you're going to be more accurate and more efficient overall. Now, the last property is kind of the neatest one of all because it will sh tell you, using this Control F, Command F trick, whether or not a word appears on the document or not. Think about that. You can actually prove that something is not on the document. That's a rare skill, a rare ability. How often can you do that in life? So remember this, sometimes you can use it to prove that, for example, a person never ran in that race, or at least was never recorded. You search for their name in that AK running race list, they're not there, they didn't run, or they were never written down by the race recorders. This overall trick is really handy to know, and I need you to have this in your toolbox. So going forward, this is the end of the first set of lessons for class number one. We're looking forward to class number two, where we will learn not just how to make queries, but how to interpret the results and understand what it is Google is trying to tell you.